Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon. Without any further ado, let's get right back to where we left off last time. Yes. Artia. Today is the first time that I am leaving the palace on a day off. Usually, I choose to stay inside. Whereas the other servants always leave to go home, I never see any reason to leave since this has always been my home. And the Marchant has never been home. Besides, it is not as if I want to return. Not after that conversation we all shared last time. Thus, I have spent most of my days asking questions about Mother's ring, inquiring when and where I can. The opinions do not surprise me. I was so scared of her. One wrong move and she'd have you thrown in prison. The townsfolk would always wait for her to pass by before leaving their houses. She was a tyrant! The kingdom is a better place now that she's gone. There is no reason for them to lie to me. The more I hear, the more my old life makes sense to me. I know now. I now know, fuck. I now... <laughs> I now know why the king never seemed to love mother and why the people hated her. And the reason people looked at me with such fear. However, it has been months since I have been glared at in public. If there is one good thing that this curse did for me, it is that it allows me to travel around town without being noticed. As Viorka's shop comes into view, my thoughts shift to the reason I have left the palace in the first place. If Rod will not tell me anything, I will have to ask Viorka. She must be related in some way to his curse. I pause outside the door to the toy shop. With a deep breath, I push the door open. Oh. Oh, fuck. I keep forgetting her voice. Welcome. <laughs> I keep forgetting her voice. The moment she sees me, her expression becomes confused. Oh. You are the princess's maid. Jadebird, wasn't it? I nod at her. You've never come here in alone before. What can I help you with? I wanted to ask you something. It, it is about Prince Rod. Prince Rod? Did something happen to him? Is he okay? He is fine. She sighs with relief. Then what is it you would like to ask? I just wanted to know if you knew anything about Prince Rod's sudden muteness. Viorka stares at me for a few moments before she shakes her head. I only know that it happened soon after I met fiancé, Desimond. What reason do you have for asking? Well... I tried to think of a plausible explanation for this, and I immediately consider Emmeline. Viorka is Emmeline's best friend. Surely she would be willing to help if she knew I was doing this for Emmeline. Prince Rod has been very quiet recently. Princess Emmeline has been worried sick about him, but he refuses to say anything, even to her. I have been trying to gather information that might be helpful in discerning the cause. <laughs> I stare at her expe expecti bleh, expectantly, hoping that my gaze holds nothing but determination. Finally, Viorka smiles. She's lucky to have a dedicated friend like you. I'm still not accustomed to the fact that Emmeline considers me a friend. Before she became the princess, I was her first confidant. We were like sisters. But now that she's living in the castle, we, are, we no longer have the luxury of spending so much time together. I worry about her constantly. Even around me, Em always tended to keep her problems to herself at first. She doesn't like to bother other people with them. It is hard not to agree. With the way Emmeline was always smiling before, I never thought she had any problems in her life. It was only recently that I discovered that she was hiding all her loneliness and pain behind a smile. It's a relief that she's befriended someone who cares so much about her. I don't know if I can be much help, but I'll tell you what I know if it will help Emmeline. To start with, 
I'm not exactly sure how everything changed, but it all happened so suddenly. All I know is that after the night I met Decima, the relationship changed. At first, he still smiled, but recently he's been avoiding me. What happened between the two of you the night you met your fiancé? Nothing. Rod and I did not meet on that day. Prince Rod wasn't there? No, but soon after what happened that night, Rod grew distant. What happened? It was a- Oh, God! <laughs> it was a stormy night, and I was heading, heading back home. I took the route by the riverbank because it was the shortest route. It was foolish of me. The road was slippery and full of mud. I lost my footing and fell into the water. The waves were strong, and I was certain I was going to drown. I don't remember what happened in the darkness of that water, only that when I woke up, my head was in Desimon's lap. That was the first time we met, but not the last. He carried me home, and he came by every day as I was recovering. And then he came to visit me right after I recovered. I tried not to get my hopes up too much, because what could this nobleman see in me, a mere commoner? But I still ended up falling in love with him. You have no idea how happy I was when he said he loved me too. It was a dream come true. Of course, every girl dreams of marrying the prince. It was all, it was in all of the fairy tales that I read as a child. None of that was, 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 was at all related to Rod. How does this relate to his curse? You said your relationship with Prince Rod changed after that night. What happened? If you are concise. I told Em and Rod about this one soon after the incident. and was happy that the two of us had fallen in love with Rod. I didn't say much of anything. That's when I noticed he started growing distant, and when I realized that he had also lost his voice. He still won't tell me anything, but I figured that was that he was. Her voice fades, but I know that she is referring to the curse. So Rod lost his voice shortly after Viewer came at Desmond. The mermaid's curse must have something to do with the tale. The little mermaid traded her voice for legs so that she could be with her prince. But that night, the only person who found her prince charming was Viorica. Rod's curse must have something to do with Desimund and Viorica. He became distant with her after finding out about Desimund. Why? Then there is the fact that he still spoke to Viorica, even if he was distant. It was only when he found out about their wedding that he became so cold. I frown as I try to or, try to organize my thoughts. How did it get to be this late? I'm so sorry, Jaybird, but I have to close the shop now. Sorry for the story. I know it has nothing to do with Rod, but it was after the incident that he began to act strangely. I don't think I was much help, but... I shook my head. You have told me what you could. Yurika walks me to the door, opening it so that the both of us can step out onto the street together. Oh damn, it did get late. Holy shit! How long was I in there for? How long was that story supposed to last? Was that supposed to last like five hours? God damn, to say those freaking sentences, like simple sentences? Jesus Christ! Whew. I really hope that you're able to help on the line and rod. I hope so too. Did you see Ophelia the other day? I catch sight of two noble women sitting on the bench together, not too far away from the toy shop. They are referring to Ophelia without her title. How disres- They are referring to Ophelia without her title. How disrespectful. Who would have thought a peasant like her could almost look like royalty? But her dress! But her dress! Has the queen she ought to be wearing silks rather than satin? I do not know why, but I bristle at their comments. Everyone is entitled to their opinion, but the fact that they are speaking so bluntly in public means that they have little worry of being overheard. I'm still not sure what the king saw in her. Hey, you know what they say about ladies lacking natural beauty. 
her talents must lie in other more persuasive areas. She must be very unpersuasive indeed if the king saw it worthwhile to marry her. As the two women laugh, I feel something hot begin to burn in my stomach. Viorca takes a sharp breath beside me. Since I became a maiden in the palace, Ophelia has been nothing but kind to me, a mere servant. She has all the right to flaunt her status and title, yet she remains humble. I now know that this is why everyone in the palace loves her. Who, oh, common women like her can only keep a man's attention for so long? I start walking toward them without thinking. Jaybird, I wouldn't. You have no right to say those things about the queen. The two women are clearly surprised at my interruption. Both of them glare at me. And you have no right to eavesdrop on us. Eavesdropping? Anyone could have heard you. Their mouths fall open. One of the women looks at me for a long time, then sneers suddenly as if, for, if something has occurred to her. I thought you looked familiar. You're the crown princess's personal maid. I see you following her around when she's in town. This is none of your business, girl. Why do you care so much for our opinions? I keep accidentally rolling my R's even though they shouldn't be ruled. <laughs> oh, perhaps it's because the girl idolizes the queen. She thinks she might also go from rags to riches. What? Oh, rags to riches! <laughs> oh, you do have a point! They stand and advance toward me. Do you want the prince for yourself, girl? And if a commoner can become the queen, it's not too difficult to imagine yourself as a princess, is it? Princess? How foolish! You're better off dreaming smaller dreams, girl! They laugh, and the irritation in my chest blazes into full-on ring- oh, Full-on anger! I'm angry! Is this what Ophelia has been dealing with for the past year? She is being treated so cruelly when she has done nothing but love the king. And I... also ridiculed her just like this. I force myself to look at the cruel women as I move my hand to the pendant hanging around my neck. I was just as cool as them. I barely feel Viorica's hand as she rests against my shoulder. Jaybird, let it go. Her Majesty wouldn't want you to do this. But I cannot just let these two women talk about Ophelia like this. I pull away from Viorica and stand firm. The Queen has a good heart. She is far more noble than either of you could ever hope to be. I think back on the times I was cruel to her. Ophelia could have easily reprimanded me for my behavior. She had the r that right as my stepmother, yet she has been nothing but kind to me. Ophelia never got angry at me, even despite my treatment toward her and her family. She has always treated others with kindness, even when they are cruel to her. Judging from the bitterness in your accusation- Wait. Oh, okay. Ju she has always treated others with kindness, even when they are cruel to her. Judging from the bitterness in your accusation, it seems... Accusations, it seems like you are jealous of her. How pathetic. The other women marches, to marches toward me, and my free hand instinctively moves to hold her hand just before her palm reaches my cheek. <laughs> I will not tolerate any insults toward the queen. A lot, a soft, fuck, a loft sight, <laughs> a loft sight. A soft light emanates from the pendant, and I can only stare at it in the shock. I got another good deed by defending Ophelia. The woman, the woman snatches her hand away. The whammin. How dare a peasant like you talk that way to us? You have you no manners. 
I could ask you the same. What happened to yours? How dare you! Well, don't you know who we are, girl? I will see you pay for your impertinence! Her words are far more weight than yours ever will. I will go to the king myself to tell him about how rude you were. I can pass that message on. I can pass on that message myself. <gasps> Run! He's gonna be safe us or something. I don't know. I turn and see see Rod walking toward us. His expression cold. The two noble women hastily curtsy. Y Your Highness. The noble women turn pale as Rod's eyes fall on them. Actually, we have an important dinner engagement. Yes, we do! The two noble women curtsy before quickly departing. What are you doing here without your guards? You. What trouble have you gotten yourself into now? Uh. I'm not supposed to tell him? Wait. Oh, yeah, I'm not supposed to tell him. Do not tell him. <laughs> I'm not supposed to tell him. Uh. Yeah, wait. Okay, yeah. Do not tell him. Sorry, I just had to make sure. It is nothing. If you refuse to tell me what happened, I will have to assume that the noble women were telling the truth about you. Jaber has done nothing wrong. In fact, I think Jaber only did what you or Emmeline would have done if, had you heard the awful things those women were saying about your mother. What? She stood up for the queen when she didn't have to. Then why didn't you just say so? Would you have believed me? Rod drops his gaze from mine. You never gave me a chance to believe you, did you? Right in the heart! He would have believed me? How am I to know that? Rod is like a walking contradiction. Yes! Oh my god! That explains everything! I could use that for everything now. Rod, Rod glances up again, this time to look at Viorca. We shouldn't keep you from returning home, Viorca. I'll take Jaybird back to the palace. Viorca's eyes narrow and she looks ready to say something, but Rod has already reached out for my hand to pull me along behind him. When we are out of sight of Viorca's shop, Rod stops, releasing my hand as he turns to face me. Did you really think I would refuse to believe you if you told me the truth? You never liked me. You have no, re you have no reason to believe me. Rod sighs, running a hand through his hair. Aww. I told you that I would help you break your curse, right? That offer alone should be enough for you to know that I... Rod turns away, suddenly looking embarrassed. Oh, Rod! <laughs> but I don't dislike you anymore. Oh, I don't dislike you either, Rod. I love you. <laughs> you are expecting me to just assume that? How would I know unless you made that absolutely, cl absolutely clear? Well, I'm making it clear now. I... I understand. Anyway, thank you for standing up for my mother. It seems like you don't require my assistance in breaking your curse after all. He gestures to my necklace. And congratulations on your second good deed, Jaybird. You're welcome! I mean, thank you! You're welcome! You're- What can I say except you're welcome for no reason at all? Oh god. Don't sing that! Don't sing that! Don't sing- I can't sing that! I can't sing anything! Don't- Shit. Suddenly tie- Tongue-tied, I find myself looking everywhere but at Rod. When I have once again gathered my senses, I turn to the road. My eyes narrow as I recognize the path we are on. This is not the way back to the palace. No, it isn't. We're going to the margin. Why? Because I was on my way there before I was forced to take a detour because someone was drawing attention to herself. What? 
but Rat ignores me, and we walk the rest of the way to the margin in silence. Waltz is the only person in the reception room when we enter. Prince Rod? Princess? It's a little late for the two of you to be here. I had meant to be here earlier. Is Lady Parfait here? Waltz nods. I'll go get her. Wait here. As soon as Waltz leaves us alone, Rod turns to me, his expression rigid. Rod steps closer and grabs my shoulders. Why are you grabbing my shoulders? I'm comfortable. What? You're not grabbing my shoulders, you're grabbing my arms! You're grabbing my arms! You're not- This is the shoulder. This is my arm. This is my shoulder. This is my arm. This is my shoulder. <laughs> this is my arm. You're not grabbing my shoulder. You're grabbing my arm. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to say that a million times. <laughs> Taking a screenshot for the thumbnail because that's what I do best. My screenshot game is so good now. Like, damn. I'm so. Fuck! I have to start over again. God damn it. I hate when that happens. It's like I accidentally click one wrong thing and it's like, shit. I have to start all over. Give me a minute, 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 it'll only take a minute for me to take a screenshot of this glorious moment, of this glorious moment, there you go, <coughs> I wasn't able to say so earlier because we were out in public, but you should know just how much danger you're in now. And yet you thought it was okay to go around on your own? It was my day off today. It is not unreasonable for me to want time for myself. Time to yourself. Don't you understand the meaning of be careful? Why would you do something as foolish as going out into town alone? I cannot help but bristle at his tone. Why are you so angry? Because you're- Rod trails off and looks away. Because you're family. Oh! Oh no, I just got family zoned! Ah! Oh! I got family zoned! Shit! <laughs> Rod, why? Ohana means family. Family means no one is left behind. Or forgotten, but she's been forgotten. <laughs> she's not family. <laughs> That's screaming. Though, I'm sorry. So you are finally acknowledging me as family. <sighs> I notice his cheeks turning red. Oh, he's a bunch of boy. To be honest, you're less of a family member and more just <sighs> important. Just. <clears throat> Rod! He just slightly unfriend family zoned me. Mm. Mm. Important? Because of all that you do for Emily. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. You're important to my sister. And not to you? Mr. Blushu boy who blushes every five fucking seconds? Because of me? He looks uncomfortable as he says the words, and I cannot help but marvel at his embarrassment. Why is he so embarrassed? But Rod changes the topic as he turns away from me. Why were you with Viorca? <clears throat> I can only think of one reason you'd speak to her. My curse. You thought you'd find out about my curse through her? I shrug. I can only assume that your curse has something to do with Viorca. Mm. I look up when Rod says something, but then stare at the curious sight before me. I look up when Rod says something, then stare at the curious sight before me. He has taken Sebi off his shoulder and is holding the doll in his hands away from his face. The two seem to be engaged in some silent conversation. Then gently, Sebi speaks words I can hear. This is the right thing to do. 
You need to help. Let her help you, Rod. Rod bites down on his lower lip before briefly closing his eyes. Eventually, he returns Sebi to his usual spot on his shoulder and turns to me. Fine. You're stubborn and you're not going to quit investigating unless I tell you, are you? Are you? You're right. Viorka is the reason I was cursed. Rod sits down on this sote and lets out a heavy sigh. His eyes are far away as he speaks to me. I was in love with Viorka, but I wasn't brave enough to tell her. I just followed her around like some kind of puppy. One day, Viorka hadn't come home and it was raining very heavily, so I went out to look for her. I found her walking along the bank of the river. I called out to her to tell her to be careful, but I don't think she ever heard me. She slipped and... Rod swallows. He clenches one of his hands into a fist. She fell into the river. I dived in after her. I somehow managed to get both of us onto the riverbank, but it didn't look like Viorica was breathing. I didn't know what to do. I started panicking. I ran off to try and find help, but I couldn't find anyone in the storm. When I returned, she was gone. I rushed to her house, and a doctor was already there tending to her, to her along with Desmond. Rod's gaze is vacant as, she, as he nods. When Viorica began to fall in love with Desmond, I felt helpless. Did you not tell her that you were the one that saved her? Why would I? Viorica was so happy believing that she and Desmond were fated to be together. I couldn't do that to her. But surely, if you told her... Rod interrupts me. I want the people I love to be happy. I don't care if their happiness causes me pain. I'd rather bear that alone instead of bringing down those around me. My chest aches as I watch Rod's face. I never would have guessed that Rod would be so selfless. But that didn't stop me from thinking that I could still make her love me instead. I decided to become what I thought Viorka wanted most. The Prince Charming of the fairy tales she so adored. And so I asked a witch to turn me into one. She, just, she stole my voice in exchange. Only then did I realize that she had inflicted the fairy tale curse upon me. The mermaid's curse. The next day, the king turned up at our house, pro proclaiming that he'd been looking for my mother for years, and that he'd never stopped loving her. When the king married my mother, I became a prince. It was just as the witch promised. But it didn't matter. I didn't see it when I made the deal with the witch, but I couldn't be blind to it forever. Desmond and Viorico really do love each other. They make each other happy. Nothing I can do will ever change that. Rod, I... Prince Rod? <clears throat> oh! Her fate pauses in her tracks when she sees me. Have I interrupted something? No. Rod moves over to Parfait, but he stops to glance back at me. I won't be long. Parfait looks at Rod and then at me, her face puzzled, but she does not say a word as Rod and her leave the room. Okay. Ah, oh, Prince Rod. Oh. I did not get the chance to discuss Rod's curse with him later that night, nor did I get the chance to speak with Parfait and Delora about my suspicions of Sir Alcaster. Well, guys, that's going to be it for this episode of Cinderella Phenomenon. If you guys enjoyed this episode, leave a like down below. Leave a comment down below. Share it with your friends. Subscribe if you haven't. Ring that notification bell. And remember, die safely. Bye-bye.